Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we are gonna build a new bass album. And this is going to be the largest album I've built to date. I had a specific request from a viewer, and I do my best to try to accommodate you guys, because the whole idea behind the channel is to give you guys content, right, that you, that you want to watch. So she asked me to create an album that had uh, pages that were not, 11 by 9, 11 by 9 in a landscape format to accommodate 8 by 10 photos. So I'm going to do that. And um, because of that, we're going to have to build a new album from scratch. Now, what I'm starting with is 12 by 12 papers. I normally work from 8.5 by 11 um, just because it's economical and those are easy to get. But in this case, because of the size and scale of the album, I am going to, all my base album is gonna be made from 12 by 12s. So having said all that, <clears throat> the first thing we're gonna do, well, let me go, let me back up a little bit. Um, you're gonna need two pieces of chipboard that are 11 and a quarter by nine and a quarter. 11 and a quarter by nine and a quarter. I'm gonna make the outside of the album a quarter inch taller and a quarter inch wider um, to help protect the pocket page that are pages that are inside of it. So you need two pieces of chipboard, 11 and a quarter by nine and a quarter, a spine piece that's gonna be nine and a quarter by two and a half. This is gonna be a four page, uh, four pocket page album. And um, I think that's probably all I would recommend putting inside of it because of the size of the pages and the weight of each of the pages, especially after we get some interactive components on it. That's gonna put a lot of stress on your spine and your hinge. So I wouldn't recommend going more than four pages. Um, but we'll make up for that by having lots of interactions uh, within a given page. Okay, now I'm gonna start um, to build the pocket page. You're gonna need two 12 by 12 sheets. You're gonna score a half inch on both of them, which I've already done, and you're gonna add your tape. Now, and this is one of the ways that I trim out my, my pocket pages and I get a better result. So now that I've got the score line, I'm gonna turn it over uh, with a score flange down. I'm gonna place the scored edge at nine and then trim. And that way I know I get a perfectly, perfect nine inch wide or tall pocket page. And I'm gonna go ahead and leave the 12 by 12 length for now. I'm gonna take, once I trim both of these, I'm gonna join them. So let's do that. So I'm gonna show you what I'm doing here on my, my trimmer. So there's my score line. I'm gonna place it down. I'm gonna put my score line right at nine inches. Right at nine inches. And trim it, we're gonna do that one more time. And I take my time on this because having a good straight pocket page to, as your base will make trimming out all your designer papers that much easier. You won't have to do as much dry fitting and checking and dry fitting and trimming um, because you're starting with a really good foundation. You're only gonna do eight of them, so it's, it's not like it takes forever. And I'm only gonna do two or make one page with you guys on my, uh, in this video and then you'll make the others on your own. Okay, now I've got these trimmed to the right uh, height. You wanna have your, your tape on opposing sides. I'm gonna peel this and fold it over and I'm going to attach this corner. And then I use this as a pivot point to line up the rest of the page. Now, because I took the time to trim this after I scored it, I know it's the right width. So I don't have to worry about these edges not meeting. As long as I get it lined up the first on this side, I know the other side's going to line up perfectly. And it does. So I think you wind up spending that time somewhere, whether it's fussing with trying to get this to look square. You know, you wind up spending the time somewhere. So I prefer to spend it trimming these down in the first place. Okay, now we have a nine inch tall pocket page, but it's 12 inches wide, which is too wide. So the other thing I do is to make sure that the edges are perfectly matched 
which sometimes they're not, and part of that is because they don't come out of the package perfectly square. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim a half inch off this side, and then a half inch off this side, and then I know my edges are perfectly mated. Okay? So we wanna finish with an 11 inch pocket page, so I'm gonna take a half inch off this side. I'm gonna flip it over and take a half inch off this side. Oops, I almost did 10. That's kind of a go-to size for me. Take a half inch, and I'm gonna do this with all four pocket pages. And now I know my edges are perfectly flush because I trim them together. Okay, and I do that on all my albums now. I didn't do that in my first tutorial when I built an album. This was something I realized. I was like, oh my God, why didn't I think of this sooner? It's so obvious. <laughs> anyway, this is what I do now. And like I said, I come up with, you know, perfect 90 degree angles on all the corners. Um, and it really helps speed up the time that it takes to add pockets, flaps, and design your paper. Okay, do that three more times. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to make the hinge. And here's the finished hinge. It's gonna look like this. So you're gonna have four uh, hinges that protrude. And then you're gonna have, I think it's three and a quarter inches left on either side. Do not trim that off. We're gonna use that to help anchor this into the book. These are very large, long pages. They're gonna be very weighty. We're gonna use these flanges on this side, on the front and back of the album to help anchor it into the book. Your, um, the weakest point in any given album is the spine and the hinge. If this hinge pulls away from the book, that's your whole album. So it's really important um, to leave this extra paper on. We're gonna cover this whole backside with adhesive. But before we get to that, I've got this one set up so that we can do it together. And I'm gonna rattle off some of the score lines. I'm not gonna go over all of them, but it is gonna be in the banner while I'm speaking. And then also, if you look at the description and click on the show more, there's a cut list that'll tell you the dimensions for everything that I just talked about, as well as where to score it. So don't panic if you don't hear everything I'm saying. You're either gonna see it in the banner or you can print out the cut list in the show more. So you're going to start with a 12 by eight and seven eighths, 12 by eight and seven eighths. So it's just under nine inches and it has to be slightly smaller than nine inches because um, the goal is that pocket page needs to slip over this. So I wind up trimming this an eighth inch shorter than the pocket page. So the pocket page is nine by 11 or 11 by nine. It's going to be inserted on the nine inch side. So this needs to be an eighth inch shorter. So that's how I come up with those uh, measurements. Some people like to trim them even shorter because they're easier to get the pocket page on. But what I found is when I trim it shorter, then, what, then you have to make a decision for every pocket page that you slip onto your hinge. Let's say for example, this is a quarter inch shorter than the pocket page. You have to decide, is the pocket page gonna rest on the bottom of the hinge or the top of the hinge? And it gives you this opportunity to, to move your pocket pages up and down and not be even. By taking only an eighth of an inch off, you don't have a lot of wiggle room up and down. So that's why I do it this way. It is a little harder to get the pocket page on, but I think you get a better result. <clears throat> okay. I was getting ready to put it together without telling you what it was. So it's eight and seven eighths by 12 inches. You're gonna start scoring on three and a quarter and you're gonna score a half inch until you get to, let me double check, eight, until you get to eight and three quarters. So that's three and a quarter, three and three quarters, four and a quarter, four and three quarters, five and a quarter, five and three quarters, six and a quarter, six and three quarters, seven and a quarter, seven and three quarters, eight and a quarter, eight and three quarters. That's how you're gonna score across. And that gives you an equal, I, I typically what I do is I take my piece of paper and I divide it in two, which is six. And I know six is gonna be my flange. So I back a quarter inch off either side and then I get an even dis distribution of the uh, hinges. Not critical, but it, <laughs> I'm kind of a symmetry nut, so 
Anyway, like I said, don't worry if you didn't catch all that because it's in the description, okay? And I'm running a banner and I'm gonna, I usually leave my banners up for 10 seconds. I'm gonna leave this up longer because I know I'm communicating a lot. Okay, so once you've done all those score lines, obviously you're gonna fold them and I'm gonna give you a tip. I should have told you this before I started folding them. But I'll, I'll do it this way. So let's just say this is your first score line at three and a quarter. So we know that the first thing we want is a hinge, right? And then the next thing's gonna be a gusset. So one of the ways to make it easy to fold vi visually is I just draw a line between those two. I know that's gonna be a pinch point. I skip this one and I draw a line between these two. There's gonna be another pinch point. You don't have to worry about the pencil mark because when you put your pocket page on, no one's gonna see it. So it'll just help you as you're t turning it over and twisting it around and figuring out where the, whether it's a peak or a valley. I just think these little stripes are just so easy to visually get a sense that I know I need to make sure that that's a valley or a gusset, okay? Most of you, if you've been watching my channel for any length of time, have already made hundreds uh, or dozens at, at the least of these hinges. But I do like to try to put the tutorial together so that if it's a first time album maker, um, they can do it. Although I would never have tried an album this large when I was first starting. But also I didn't have any tutorials. <laughs> I did a lot of experimenting. So when I first started doing this, um, there was very few tutorials available and none of them were free. <laughs> um, now there's just so much content out there for you guys to take advantage of that's free. There's still the paid stuff too, but there's a lot of good content that's free. Um, I think part of the reason there wasn't a whole lot of content out there is um, video technology has changed so much. Most of the tutorials that I had seen were for sale and they were PDFs. And um, I, uh, I guess I never, I never really bought any of those. I just kind of figured it out. Um, just watching, I, I'm sure, I think it's Cora's Creations is where I first learned how to build a base and she has very good tutorials. She was very easy for me to follow. So, so I learned how to make the base of the album, the flaps and the pocket pages themselves and how to wrap the cover. And I think that's where I got my start. And, and then after watching people um, show pictures of the albums, I kind of got an idea of how to attach the flaps and pockets. Anyway, so that was a long time ago, hundreds of albums ago. <laughs> Um, okay, so that's it. It's ready for me to add all, or us, to add all the adhesive to the backside. And it's expensive, but like I told you, this is the most critical part in your whole book. If your hinge fails, your book will fall apart. You're going to cover this side to side, top to bottom with tape. It's not cheap, I know. It's probably one of the most expensive um, staple items that you use. But... It's not the place to go cheap. I would do not use glue. Um, glue fails. Um, it just dries up over time and it, it will fail. The adhesive, um, the, the score tape, and that's the only one I recommend. I've had score tape fail, non-brand score tape fail. So the only one I recommend is the actual score tape brand. And I have albums that have been handled greatly because we take them to our retreats and such that are in excess of five years old and they are fully intact. So this is where you don't want to skimp. There's other places to try to economize. This isn't it. Okay, so we're not. I'm, I'm gonna cover this um, in tape. We don't have to do that together, but do cover the entire thing. And then um, I'll show you the back of this when we're ready to actually apply it to the book. Okay, so just to recap, we've made the pocket page, this large pocket page, which is gonna fit over these hinges when we're done. And you can see this is not a mini album, this is an album. I think I might even call it something separate because it is so large. It's just shy of a regular 12 by 12 album. Um, and it is nine by 11, that's the size of the pocket page. And then I think I showed you earlier 
yeah, my chipboard, I set it aside. You're gonna need two pieces of chipboard, nine and a quarter by 11 and a quarter, and nine and a quarter by two and a half for the spine. Okay, so that's it for now. Um, when I get back, I'm going to have the rest of my pocket pages and um, we're gonna go over how to cover the chipboard and um, add the hinge to the album. We are not gonna add the um, pages until the very end. I like to decorate them outside of the book because it's flatter. Um, as you build the book up, you, you know, it gets bulkier and bulkier. It's very hard to get a straight 90 degree adhesion on, on your flaps and pockets if it's laying on top of something that has dimension. So I, I try to decorate these off out of the book and then add them at the very end. So we will do all that together. Um, I'm going to show how to add it to here, but I'm not going to actually adhere it. Okay. So the next thing you're going to need to do is put tape on the back of this. We're going to put tape on either side of these um, hinges. And then I'm just going to demonstrate how these get installed, but we're not going to do an installation. But for now, I'm going to take a break because i got to line up some papers to actually cover this. It's so wide. I've got to figure out how I'm going to situate this on my um, cardstock so that I can minimize the number of seams that are in the cover. Okay, so I'll be back soon. Hey everyone, it's Daphne and we're continuing to work on this large album, which is um, 11 and a quarter by nine and a quarter. And so I'm getting ready to prepare um, what's going to be the cardstock for the cover. And I'm gonna lay these out real quick. So this is gonna be um, a landscape album. So this is two 12 by 12, so you can see that's not gonna be big enough. So I've added another piece of cardstock to the middle. This is six and a half by 12, six and a half by 12. And then, and the reason I did that so much larger than, than I need is I want this to completely wrap around the, the hinge area of the album this area right here so there's no join seams anywhere near here so it's going to come around to the front and we'll camouflage it once we put decorator paper on it but I don't want this join anywhere near that spine <clears throat> okay so two 12 by 12s one six and a half by 12 and we're just going to join these three pieces together and then that should be wide enough to cover our album <clears throat> If I can get get under the tape, there we go. There we go. And I just used my grid to help me put it on straight. It's going to wrap around the edge of the chipboard, so it's not critical, but it just makes it neater. So I'm using this straight line on my grid on my grid here, my um, cutting mat, just lining it up. Once I uh, tap it down on one corner, I kind of use that as a pivot point. Okay, so that's in. There we go. And I want this to be the same on both sides, so I'm going to apply this on top of this. And that way, the seams are the same on both sides. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. And it's a little hard to work with because it's so much paper, but there's our six and a half piece right there. I'm going to put it on my grid and then try to lay it down as straight as possible. And again, it's gonna get wrapped around your chipboard so it's not critical. What's, what is important is that this paper covers up the uh, adhesive completely, that none of the adhesive is exposed. Okay, there we go. Now I'm gonna burnish that into place. <clears throat> with my Teflon bone folder, which I love. When you get uh, some extra money and you want to splurge on a tool, this is the one. I like it so much better than my um, plastic bone folder. This one leaves marks across the paper, and this one does not. It also doesn't make that terrible scratchy noise that the other bone folder does, and it used to drive me crazy like fingernails on a chalkboard. Okay, so that's done. So there's our center. So now I'm gonna draw a quick line along the bottom and it's gonna be sort of the reference line as I go to install these, these panels. I, I wanna install them as straight as possible across the width of um, 
actually they're going to go down like that. So that's just score tape on the back. They're going to go in like this. I want to try to get this centered and then I want um, to come up about an inch from the bottom and I want that to be straight. So I'm going to put a reference line and then I'll have an inch on top. So I'll wind up trimming off just a little bit of this paper. And I don't measure an inch. What I do is I just use the width of my ruler and draw that reference line in with a pencil. <clears throat> and you don't have to go across the whole length. You just have to go so that it includes part of each panel. Okay. Okay, so cover the back of your spine and your... This one, um, I happen to have this super wide sheet. Actually, it's a roll. So I'm using a lot, but most of the time I frame this and then I'll put um, uh, tape about that far apart across the back. It doesn't have to be solid, um, but I just happen to have these big pieces, so I went ahead and did that. This I recommend being as close to solid as possible. I didn't have a piece that fit in there perfectly. That's as close as I could get. <clears throat> What is wrong with my throat? I've got a catch in it. Okay, so I'm going to start by putting down the spine piece. We're going to center it on this six and a half inch piece, and I should do that right now. Put that reference line right now of where the center is going to be. Is that six and a half? So the center of that's going to be three and a quarter. Right there. <clears throat> And I'm just lining it up right there on my pencil mic line. I'm going to make sure the bottom is good and secure because as soon as I start taking my fingers out from under it, it wants to shift because I'm stuck to the, to the uh, tape. Okay, I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to spread out a little bit more so I can shift the paper over. Okay, so this is going to be the piece that goes in here. We need to, de um, to um, space it so it has some room to move. So you can do, I've got two methods. Um, one, and I don't think I have my, I don't think I have it in here. One is you can use your Tim Holtz ruler as a spacer. It's about an eighth of an inch wide. The other thing that I most frequently do is I use chipboard. And so I'll take two pieces of scrap chipboard, glue them together, the same chipboard that you're using, and a double wide piece of chipboard right here winds up being the perfect spacing. And I just realized I got in here without either one of those. So I'm going to do one side with Tim Holtz and I'm gonna do the other side with a chipboard so that you'll know how to make um, what I call a spacer jig um, if you don't have the ruler. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I've got my Tim Holtz ruler and then I've got my spacer. So this just happened to be two pieces of scrap and I layered them. You can see how they're joined together. When you do that, before it dries, press it down so that one side is very smooth and, and flat, and you can use that as your spacer. So we're gonna do the first side using this spacer. I'm gonna do the other side using the Tim Holtz ruler, and I'm gonna bring that up and show you that basically the width of two of the chipboard pieces is the same width as this ruler. But you have to make sure you use this edge, not this edge. This edge has kind of a bevel on it. I want to use the flat edge. Okay. I apologize for my dog. It is dog walking time in the neighborhood, so she's busy barking at everybody. She's right outside my window. All right. So the trick here is we are going to come at adding this at an angle. Um, and I'll show you what I mean in just a moment once I get this all off. So you don't want this to grab until you're ready. I'll do it so that the numbers are straight. So we're gonna come in at an angle like this. We're gonna push this spacer against the spine piece like this until we get it the way we want it and then we're gonna lay it down moving away from the spine. And that way you don't have to worry about all this tape 
catching before you're ready. Okay. So I'm pressing against this. It should be standing on its own. And you also want to use your ruler on the bottom to make sure you're pressing down and across. I'm actually not happy with that ruler. There we go, down. And across. And it looks like it went in straight there. Okay, and I can see that it's trailing down and that's because I didn't get something in straight. <clears throat> But none of that's going to matter once we wrap it. You won't see it. <clears throat> okay, now we're going to do the other side. I'm going to shift this over. We're going to use, I'm going to try to use the ruler. I haven't done it, but I've seen people do it. So the other thing I try to do is I try to peel from the top down so that you're not dragging your hands back across the adhesive. When you start bottom up, you're, you keep putting your hand back over the tape. we go. Now we're going to try this ruler. And I'm hoping I'm staying on screen. There we go. This is the blunt edge. This is the beveled edge. Beveled edge up. And you can see they're basically the same. So if you have the ruler, great. If you don't use um, use this chipboard, try to go about the length of the spine piece because if you don't, there is an opportunity to torque it and have it be narrower at the bottom. So the longer your spacer, the, the better, more consistent result you'll get, okay? Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim off the excess paper. And I'm just going to lay my ruler down and, and run the, uh, the box cutter over it and just get rid of that. It's going to be too bulky. Um, and we're going to do that on three sides. We don't have to do it on the bottom because we already drew that line. right where the tape is, didn't want to let go. Okay. Okay, so that is most of the way done. Now we're gonna take our bold and folder and we're gonna just trace around the edges and start to create, um, basically, paper has a, a fiber uh, grain to it and it, as part of the process of making paper, the, the fibers will line up. Um, they start like this and as the paper um, drains all the water and moisture from it, they start to line up. Um, so your, your paper is gonna have a grain one way or the other. And when you're scoring with the grain, it's a much smoother, easier um, score line. It's, it just looks more finished. It has, it's less likely to crack. And when you score against the grain, um, that's where you run into issues of it wanting to, uh, I guess buckle is the best term I can use. Um, and one of the ways to help work around that is by um, taking your bone folder and running it over um, the edge and starting to create that score and that the bone folder is helping to, if the fibers are lined this way, it's helping to break them up so it'll fold more smoothly.
Okay, and then once we do that all the way around, uh, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna miter these corners. Now, if you have a tape tear tool, that's what I use. It's the right width. It's about an eighth of an inch. You can use this as well. I just use it, it's easier for me to hold on to. And then I draw a line and cut it, and just manually cut it with scissors. So it needs to be the same width as your spacer uh, between the covers. And the reason we do this is if you don't cut off some of that excess paper, it's too bulky when you go to wrap the, uh, the book. Okay, I'm gonna use some scissors to cut that. You can use your straight edge and a exacto knife if you prefer. <laughs> this is a big book. <laughs> it's taking up the whole desk. If you're unsure, cut on the outside of the line, on the outside of your line, um, because you can always cut off more paper. You can't add it back on. You don't want an exposed corner. There we go. Okay, now we've already scored it. We've mitered our corners. Now it's time to start training the paper to wrap around the chipboard. And then we're gonna add some tape and tape it down. Heat and oils from your hand help um, manipulate the fibers as well. So try not to be in too much of a rush here. You'll get a better result if you're patient. straighten that out we're going to add some tape and I am going to use until I run out 5 8 inch so you want to put it on the edge of your flange here like so And then you've got a gap and that's okay because we're gonna put tape here and then when you fold them over, um, they'll be tape covering both pieces, both sides. Or it'll fill that gap is what I'm trying to communicate. <laughs> now you can just run your tape from one end to the other, but I take a break right here because um, I found that um, when I run the tape across, um, when I open and close the book, it, it functionally it works, but I can hear it hear it snapping because it's tape against tape <laughs> that's moving and it just makes this crinkly noise and I don't like it so it's really a preference okay we're going to do the other side I always do the the length or width of the book f first get it all taped down and then I work on the ends after we get this taped up the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start uh, pulling the, the cover up and joining it in the middle to train some of the paper that's right here on the spine. And also if any of the paper wants to pull, we want that to happen before we wrap. So this is a fairly simple process. Um, it is a little time consuming, um, but it's not hard. It takes, it takes me, I guess, 40 minutes to an hour to make a book. 
uh, and the pages. It's a lot of taping, which is kind of time consuming. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and add the tape to the ends. We're just not gonna do anything with it right now. And I think that's the end of my roll. That is the end of my roll. So we're gonna finish up with 3 8 inch. which is what I normally use. Um, if I have 5 eighths, I'll use that, but 3 eighths is fine. Same thing, you don't need S, you know, you don't need three strips of it. You use one on the top, one on the um, chipboard, and one on the cardstock. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna do some burnishing of the tape. <clears throat> okay. I call this a pick tool, but it's called a hook. By Silhouette. We sell them in the shop. Um, most cutting tools like Silhouette and Cricut whatnot have a series of tools um, to do weeding on your mats, but I wound up using it for this purpose and I love it for this. It works really good, um, especially if you need to get under something. Like when I go to put my pages in the book, you'll see I use my hook to pull the tape off. <clears throat> Okay, so now um, on the next step, we're gonna start wrapping. And what's important when you're wrapping, especially something this large, is you wanna start in the middle and move out. If, if for some reason you get a buckle in your paper, you don't want it bunched up on your spine. That's where you're gonna um, adhere your, your hinge. So if you get a buckle that you need to work out, you want it to be out here on the outside, not toward the inside. I have to keep shifting because the book is actually wider than my cut mat. <laughs> so my surface isn't completely flat. Okay, I'm gonna start toward the middle. And I'm gonna push up and out, up and out. There we go, that's pretty good. It looks like everything went in smooth. I don't have any buckles, which is beautiful. I don't usually, you probably won't either, but it can happen. And you cannot recover. Um, the best thing you can do is use like an X-Acto knife, cut the buckle out, and then try to smooth it over. Um, it's not ideal, but it can be done. And hopefully the buckle is really toward the top and not toward um, the edge of the chipboard. If it's over the edge of the chipboard, you're gonna, you're gonna see it. I'm breaking my rule. I was, I need to start so that I don't drag my hand across the tape. <clears throat> okay. After we finish wrapping it, we're going to install the um, the hinge, which to me is the hardest part. Because if you don't get it in straight, your pages won't go in straight. It's not hard, it's tedious. Here, you can recover um, from anything crooked because it's getting wrapped, but getting that hinge in straight is critical. So I always say, if you don't feel like working on it, set it aside and come back to it when you've got more patience. It doesn't take long, but if you don't get it in straight, very hard to recover from.
Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start working this um, carefully. Don't use a sharp, so I use a different tool when I'm actually scoring um, than, a, than this, but use the widest one you have because you don't want to risk puncturing uh, your, your uh, cardstock at this point. So I'm not pushing very hard, I'm just working it back and forth, back and forth. And it should naturally fall into that groove. Okay. And take your time. You don't want it to crack across the back. Although I am going to add book binding tape to this. It probably won't crack, but I'm going to do that anyway, just because I think, um, you know, you don't... It, it gives me a sense of security that the book is going to last. I, I think I mentioned this before, but this is your greatest point of failure, your spine and your hinge. So anything you can do to reinforce your spine and your hinge, by all means, do it. So I'm just softening this and making sure it's completely adhered. Now, the next thing is we're going to start on the sides. Okay, you'll find, I'm going to bring this up to the camera, you'll find that you have a little left, little paper right here. That paper needs to get pulled down over the edge. You can do it with your fingernail or a bone folder or there's any number of ways. And then we're going to fold it over. So what I like to do, I don't like that little, oops, I'm off camera, that little tab sticking up there. So I'm going to trim off that little bit and I'll show you how I do that. So it's got this little bump here. I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to fold it over. And I'm going to place my scissors on the corner and I'm going to cut away from the corner and just take off that little tip. That's it. That's all you do. Always cut away from the corner, fold it over, cut away from the corner. And a lot of times it's just a tiny sliver, but getting that little tip off, that's something that's going to catch over time. So I like to remove it, but after you push it down, push it down, fold it over, trim. the same thing on this side and as usual I flip the book all over the place because I want to move the book to me instead of trying to lean over and see something in the distance edges and see how they look and I can see I want to trim off a tiny bit here and here okay remember all these mitered corners are going to be covered for the most part by your designer paper
Okay, there is our cover. And you can see here's our seam, which is plenty far away from uh, the spine. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna add our, our hinge system. Okay, so the way I've done this book, normally I have a half, my cover is a half inch larger than uh, the spine, or the hinge, sorry. And in this case, I, I decided I need to do some erasing. I've got the G's in here for gusset, <laughs> and I don't really wanna see those. I'll erase them in a minute. Um, I decided to do a quarter inch larger since the book is so large already. So we just wanna center it top and bottom. So one of the things that helps me center it is I lay these flanges down or this hinge down because the hinge is a half inch. So I know that there's a half inch between between um, the hinge here on the the spine and the cover. I'm, I'm supposed to have a half inch gap before I get to my first page. So if I lay these down opposite each other, I should be able to pretty much line up the tip point of this hinge with this score line. It's not gonna match perfectly, but it's gonna be pretty good and it makes it a lot easier to center it. Now again, like I said, this is what is the most tedious part of the book because you gotta be patient and there's a lot of tape on it. So once, you, once it goes down, you're committed. Now I just noticed I've got a little bit of tape sticking out. I'm gonna shave that off because I don't want anything sticky protruding past the paper. Okay, I, th I think the rest I can tuck under. Okay, so hold your flanges down, get a visual, start to get a sense of where it's going to be. Then you're gonna take off your tape. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I used a, a big giant sheet. It's nice because it goes quickly. It's bad because once you're committed, you're committed. Now if you do a bunch of um, a bunch of strips across the back, the nice thing is you can take one or two strips off, leaving the rest of the covers tape cover on. Get it where you want it. Stick down those two strips, and then you can just reach under and peel off the rest and lay it down. So there's pros and cons to both approaches. And I feel like I'm taking a big chance right now because I don't usually do it this way. And I'm not going to take off this strip, these strips. I won't do that until after I get it placed. But trying to lift one or two strips of tape off to, to reposition, pretty easy. Trying to lift this much tape off, probably not going to happen. So wish me luck, guys. So I'm going in at an angle, so the bottom is touching, and I, it has to have enough of a grip that I can pull my fingers out without it repositioning. That's kind of the key. As I take my fingers off, it's going to want to torque around like it just did but I still think I'm okay. Okay, we did it. I did it. Okay, press everything into place. I'm gonna reach in with my hook tool, my hook pick tool, and pull off the rest of the tape. There we go. That's in. Now, if you get this far and then you get your hinge in and you're really not happy with it, you can use this undo to remove the hinge and try to salvage the cover. If you use undo to lift it off, throw the hinge away because you'll never get the, these pieces to stick again. Um, they'll start to spread on you. So you'll have to start with a new um, 
new hinge system. But I, I have done that. I have successfully lifted it off without damaging my cover, so I was at least able to save the chipboard pieces and the wrap. It happens. Sometimes you just lay it down and you're like, oh, I can't live with it. It's just too crooked. <laughs> okay, now we're going to do the same thing where we're going to try to run our score lines here gently, gently. Start working this in. And then the last thing we're going to do, well, we're going to do two things. We're going to add some um, book repair, book binding tape. Um, and that way I know for sure I'm never going to lose my hinge. Um, it's not going to come off the book, um, but also that I don't have to worry about cracking on the outside. So these flanges are, are, are left on, in place because we want this additional anchor. So in addition to being held here, it's being held by the, the two panels out here. So some of the weight's being distributed. Um, by adding this reinforcement tape, we're again just adding more reinforcement and helping to take some of the weight. That, the pages are going to be quite large, so it's going to be pretty weighty. So I think it's a good idea. And the way I do that is I have this fabric um, measuring tape. And I'm going to wrap it around. And I'm going to get my measurement. So let's see. I need a piece of book binding tape that is 18 and 3 quarters. And I need two of those. <clears throat> 18 and 3 quarters. So we're going to do that twice. We'll wrap it and then I'm going to show you how to put a page in. Ah! It's very sticky. As you can see, I just made it, I just made a mess. So it, I can't, I can't recover. All I can do is, is cut it. It's very sticky. You really need a metal ruler. So this is uh, probably one of the more challenging things because because it's so sticky. I'm trying to get it cut without it grabbing on itself. That's why I put it down on the mat. be cut at 18 and 3 quarters which is right here I try to make it fit perfectly because it gets a little bulky if it overlaps this is um, an optional step but I'm going to show you how to do it and right now I'm in the process of trying to find some good book cloth but I've not uh, found a good source yet which would hopefully replace this I didn't cut deep enough. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and lay this one in. And be careful pulling it up so it doesn't flip back on itself. Okay, I visually just look for about the center. We're going to push this right up to the first hinge. And lay it down. Okay, that's in. I'm going to flip it over. And before I, I'm not touching the back of the book yet. I'm holding it away from the book. I want to visually try to line it up with this edge before I let it touch the back of the book. Okay, and then we're going to lay it down just like so. Okay, I made that look easy, it's not. So don't panic if you feel like you're really struggling because it is difficult. Okay, we burnish that all into place. And now we've got this nice protected cover and spine. Now I'm gonna do that one more time. 
18 and 3 quarters. This is 2 inch binding tape. I had found this really nice tape that had uh, paper. It was paperback, so you, it was just like double face tape. You, you'd get it where you wanted, and then you took the tape off the back. But I could only get it in one inch width, and that wasn't wide enough. But it was so much easier to work with and cut. <clears throat> so I keep looking. If I find it, you'll know. Okay, 18 and 3 quarters. This time I'm going to press a little harder, so... Be careful when you start to, to cut because the, especially if your knife is not sharp, it's going to want to drag and pinch your tape together. And again, you can't smooth it out. You have to just cut that edge off and start over. Okay, that time I could feel that it went through. All right, that's that. The tape is kind of expensive, but when you think about the investment in your book, um, and all the paper that goes into it and all the time that goes into it, if it falls apart because of because of your um, your cover or your hinge, it would just be such a frustrating thing. Okay, again, we're going to... I'm just visually trying to line it up with the other side. I'm going to come back over that tape with a Sharpie to color the, the white threads that are showing. But you are going to be able to see the texture there. You'll, you'll see. You'll know there's tape there. Um, but I will mask some of that with sharpie. Okay. I know I'm going in and out of um, frame, but part of that is because what I'm dealing with is just so big. Oh, don't, don't stick. So that's very disappointing, but I'm still going to use it. But you can see it's so sticky that it just pulled the adhesive off right there. So that's probably the first experience you'll have, and I've had that many times, so don't panic. Try to pull it apart. If it doesn't work, then just trim it and start over. And I've got a little bit of a bubble here, but I'm not really worried about it because that's where that tape grabbed. I'm going to have designer paper over that. Okay, so the last step is to add just some marker here on the edges. And you can tell it's a different color black, but it's better than the white threads. Now really, this is what's going to show what's in the gusset. This You're going to have designer paper to here. And I do this on all of them, and I, probably most of you haven't even ever noticed it. Um, once you get your designer paper in, there's so much more to look at. You probably won't notice that. Okay, so again, all you really need to do is cover the space between the score line and the first hinge, because that's what's going to be exposed. Everything else is going to get covered. Lovely, lovely. That's our book. You'll notice when you go to try to close it, it feels really stiff, but that um, fabric is gonna give way over time. But it does help your book re retain quite a bit of structure. Um, after you're finished, it won't wanna collapse on itself like it will if you don't have um, this reinforced spine. Okay, so all that is done. So now um, you can trim out a piece to go here, um, and I think I'm going to, but I don't think I need to show you guys that. And, and the reason you would do that is you want to bring this chipboard to the same level as this so that when you put your designer paper here, you don't feel this around it, and it also prohibits um, any air pockets from being formed because your designer paper is going to be actually attached to the outside. So if you don't want, if you want to make sure there's no air pockets, just trim something out that's going to fit most but not overlap this okay here's a pocket page that we made very large pocket page so the way that this is going to work is we're going to 
apply tape and I'm just going to do one right now and you can do the rest on your own and I'm using 3 8 inch tape on a half inch hinge so it covers most of the hinge you need to install it to the very top of the hinge so that it's not exposed on the bottom part of the hinge down here so you want it to be as close to the top as possible okay I'm gonna do it on both sides and this is what's actually going to hold your pocket page on Okay, so once you've done that, you're gonna do all four. You open up your pocket and you're gonna slide it over that hinge, like so, okay? Then what I do is I lay down the page and I look for even borders, top and bottom, up and down, and that's where this pick tool comes in and I reach in and I pull out that tape, press it into place, flip it to the other side, reach in, pull out the tape, and then my page is installed. Now I'm not gonna do that with you right now because I like to decorate my pages outside the book and I've asked you guys and most of you prefer it that way. So you don't have to, if you want, you can install them now and then decorate your pages um, inside the book. That's the way I used to do it, um, but you guys had asked that I do it a little bit differently and, and that's fine. Um, I've kind of gotten used to it and I think there's some real benefits to it. As you start to get toward the back of the book, if these, if page one, two, and three are decorated and they're in the book and you're trying to decorate page four or the page eight, which would be the second side of page four, um, what you find is you're trying to decorate and add flaps on this very uneven surface. So I think there's some real benefits to doing it outside the book and adding it at the last minute or adding it when you're finished. Okay, all right, that's it. So we have just made, for the first time ever, um, 11 and a quarter by nine and a quarter by two and a half, four page, four pocket page album. And then our pocket pages themselves are nine by 11, nine by 11. So that's a big book. So I think the biggest page I had before was eight by 10. So this is an inch taller and an inch wider than the largest one I've done so far. So anyways, um, you're gonna go along for the ride with me. We're gonna learn some things <laughs> um, about doing albums this size and I will share everything I can with you. One of the things I'm, I'm thinking about is not doing inserts for this pocket page. And the reason is trying to get something this large to slide in and out without um, warping or having to man, you know, work really hard to feed it in, it might be a challenge. So we'll see when we get to that. Um, I'm either gonna create inserts or I'll glue this side closed. I haven't decided. We shall see um, as we get closer to the end. That's one of the last things I do are the inserts. And that's a decision that you can make at the very last minute. And it's also something that you can do on any album that I make. You don't have to have inserts. You can glue, glue that pocket closed. Okay, thanks everybody for tuning in. This is Daphne from Scrap and Crate. Okay. Be back soon.